Cool. Well, I do want to kick it off and start a little bit of chatter. And I want to go to uh, Christine and Stacky actually first this time because we had them on last week, but they uh, I didn't realize that there was like a time conflict. So I didn't I didn't really get to give them enough time like they deserve. So Stacky, I'll actually kick it off with you. And for tonight, I'm curious about a few things. So the point of the space each week is definitely to like bring alpha to people, right? Highlight top projects. What have you been investing in within the NFT world? What's caught your eye? And then also on the update side, like has there been any news or things that stood out to you where there uh, maybe there was a big rug or people, something people should be, you know, knowing more about or just being careful. Um, but yeah, floor is your stack. You'd love to start off there and then we'll go to Christine and then we'll go to the, you know, the other speakers and coasts and get everybody involved. And I staggered the speakers a little bit for tonight. I told some of them to come in a little bit later uh, just so that people wouldn't have to kind of like wait as long, hopefully. So we should be able to get to everybody within a reasonable time period. Well, so far as Rev's concerned, uh, I know you all heard of Squiggles. <laughs> they call it Ruggles and Struggles today. <laughs> no, no. They're yeah, squiggling their ass away. Yeah. Like a, they straight up squirming away like a worm. So uh, what happened there is <laughs> that uh, somebody came out. I don't even know who it was. They came out, uh, Rug Report or something like that. And they came out with photo photo proof that that pro that project was a rug and lo and behold i think it minted at one eth and then it slowly but surely went down and down and down i don't know where it's at now but 0.35 <laughs> five yeah so it's at 0. 0.05 0.35 uh, 0.35 okay okay so that's i guess i don't know but um yeah so that that's it for the rug of the day <laughs> of the day Notice I said that. Um, so far as projects I'm looking at, I've really been kind of focused on very small projects, and um, just because just because I'm not really, I want to see projects before they start. You know what I'm saying? I want to see what they're doing, you know, from the ground up, and I want to see where I can kind of like help out a little bit, just a little bit. And try to pull, especially some of these these women, the women projects are the projects I'm mainly focused on. You know, that's like my my passion. So I'm kind of focused on the very small projects. Um, like I said, uh, Cozy Bear is one of my favorite. She basically has a team of people. Uh, she's from Germany. She has a team of people. They have developers uh, working on this program that can that will help other people coming into the NFT space create their project. So she's created this program. Uh, I think it's some kind of generator. So from the ground up, their project she's helping in the DAO. So uh, when you own a te- when you own a cozy bear, when you own a cozy bear, you uh, you become a part of this DAO. And um, in this DAO, you vote on the project that you want to see next. And uh, out of somebody who belongs, who has a teddy, who has a cozy bear. And if they get picked, basically they'll fund and release your help, release your project. So the utility is just, it's the bomb because it makes more projects, you know. And not only that is um, how they're going about it is very legit, you know. You know, um, they're slowly opening up the room. It's not, they're getting to know everybody, you know, as they come in. So I'm really bullish on uh, Cozy Bear, very much so. Uh, let's see what else. You got Women of the Future. You got a future, you know, uh, she's donating to domestic violence. Uh, you know, I'm big on that. Then you have, so there's there's many projects I'm looking at right now, the women projects mostly. That's why I'm asking, you know, everybody, to kind of, you know, show me where the projects are and um, the women projects are. And especially I'm looking at minority women also because uh, some people are having trouble. A lot of minority women are having trouble uh, really accessing the information to kind of get their projects out there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking at those two. So I'm kind of on my, like, I don't know helping thing right now when it comes to nft projects so yeah those are the projects of bullish on also eva longardia right 
she had a space today. I thought that was really cool. I sat in on it. It was really dope what, um, what she was talking about, you know, just being in the scene. And she seems really genuine in it. So I can get with that. Uh, people who are trying to just make a quick buck, I'm not really a fan of. But she seems like she's really genuine about being in this space and how she found out about this space. It was really cool. But, yeah, that's all I have to say right now. Love it. Next. <laughs> Love it, Saki. And I know you had posted mm -hmm. out the women projects that you were supporting. If you want to pin any of those mm -hmm. up top, sure. I definitely feel free. So I'm actually I'm actually gonna have a long behind thread on all of the projects I'm bullish on maybe <laughs> next week. I already started collecting information and it should be done next week. So I'll be sharing that too. But I'm gonna go ahead and share it with, um the projects I'm bullish on at the top. Also Chanel is down there and I'm also bullish on her project. Uh she's doing really good. I love the art on it. So but yeah, I'll pin it at the top. Perfect. Well, we appreciate you being on here, Stacky. Uh, always knowledgeable within the space and, you know, curious to learn more. So that's why you're great to have on spaces. Okay. Christine, would you like to go next with some of what you've been seeing in the space? Maybe some of the stuff you've been working on? I know you've been collaborating with some different projects. Hello. Um, as far as projects I've been working on with uh, some people in the space um it's more like um i'm trying to catch my i was like tattooing right now and now i'm like sorry um i don't know like we have some i'm working on some co pretty cool things for this space um with some friends golden ticket club there's like a project that i'm supporting and part of and it's gonna be minting i believe late february 2 22 22 and it's basically the whole utility is bringing fun into the space and uh it's going to mint at 0 0.03 eth and it's going to be every month and it's kind of like um where everyone has the uh, you know that everyone's el eligible to win every day like win something every day and we're in a space right now like the nft space it's like so cautious and a lot of people are starting to like what doll was talking about um you know we come into these projects and a lot of them that we go into are scams or rugs or um pretty heartbreaking stories so we just want to bring some fun uh, into the space not so serious and the whole utility is fun i'm helping out projects like some pretty hype projects i know ashley as well with um like vapes um and they have a lot of in real life utility and that's like something i'm kind of psyched for as far as the nft space and moving forward in to this year i feel like a lot of nft projects are starting to incorporate uh, major in real life utility and that's super important to me and I think that helps onboard a lot of people into the NFT space as far as explaining to them how NFTs work I think those are the ones I'm super bullish on as far as um, being able to onboard people and people understanding how NFTs work so a lot of the projects that I am interested in or collaborating with um, are the ones with a lot of the in real life utility with uh, tangible or um, you know just something that people can understand and you could not only is it an awesome PFP or JPEG or artwork it also you know can change your life in the real life and metaverse life and web3 life but yeah that's pretty much it I hang around I hang around with Anonymous a lot, and uh, he always is my alpha guy, and he has a bunch of stuff going on, and uh, my brain is tired a lot because he has so much things um, in this space. So, But yeah, thanks for having me again, and I'm in here, and I'll be listening while I'm working. Okay, one more question before you go back to work. What's the best utility that you've seen so far? Hmm. The best utility. What'd you say? Hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> I know, right? Um, there's been some in real life utility that I'm impressed with is like access to there was one that just told me his NFT gives you access to this suite at a sports like um 
a sports arena in Texas, and um, they're gaining access to a bunch of other um, sports event places. So when you hold his NFT, you get to like rent it out or attend games and stuff like that. So that was new. Um, there's also one that is a concierge service and it's it gives you access to like luxury concierge services like um, private jets, um, <laughs> in-house massage appointments and um, I don't know, like stuff like that. It's so cool. So I think um, I would have to say the one that gives you access to the sporting events, like any games or fights that you want to attend, as long as you book it out um, far enough. And then the mint price was pretty low. It was like 0 0.08 or something. So I think that one's the one I'm most impressed with at this time. I mean, that, that that's definitely pretty cool. My What I always look into with those is, is the value of this seat to a game or you know, another thing that they're offering is that could, could you just get it for cheaper by buying it versus paying for the NFT? But it sounds like you're saying that there was a actual like monetary beneficial di difference here to buying the NFT versus just going and buying the seat or the suite or something like that. Right. And then, um, and then he said you were going to be able to like rent it out as well. So, and you brought up real estate earlier with NFTs too. That's something I'm super interested in. And I think they're delving into, uh, the NFT space pretty, um, they're going in depth with how they could actually um, utilize the NFT space to make it easier in the real estate. Not necessarily easier, but definitely more simple and um, get rid of a lot of excess that they don't have to deal with and get real estate done using NFT utility. Sweet. Well, thank you for being with us, Christine, and good luck with work too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, cool. All right, Ashley, let's bring you in. I know it's been a wild week on your end. Fill us in on what's been going on and what's going on with the project and everything that you're looking at. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, it has been kind of a wild week. Uh, there was a, a little misunderstanding with the Twitter and I can't use my main account right now, but it's okay. Um, so basically, um, I've been working on my newest project, She Survives. Um, it's a 10,000 uh, collection of bald, beautiful women that are survivors of breast cancer. Um, so basically, all the women um, like are bald with no eyelashes, drawn on the eyebrows, all of that to represent um, what some women, women look like after they you know, go through their chemo treatments. Um, so basically, um, 25% of the proceeds of the project will be going to the American Cancer Society. Um, and the, what's cool about that, uh, project, or I'm sorry, the, the, um, the organization is that they allow you to pay them in Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency that you would like them to. And not only that. Um, you know, since I have a partnership with them, I actually get to choose um, where I want that money to go. So I can choose specific on call. Or, you know, other things like that. So um, that's something really cool. Um, another There were, so I had already grants for secondary sales. So what I actually ended up working out is uh, Keep a Breast actually does uh, grants every month. So I'm going to be sponsoring their grants. Um, and basically the grants are for women um, that have, you know, had trials and things like that and that can't afford treatments or that can't afford certain things in their life because the, of their um of their struggle with breast cancer. So, um, you know, I'll be doing other things, um, but mainly my goal with this project is to create a project that's sole utility is a um, charity. Like I, I don't feel, you know, like I, I obviously want to add some other utilities at some point, depending on how everything goes. And a lot of that will be decided by my community. But, but yeah, it's basically... 
Um, I, I plan on being one of the first NFTs that's sole purpose is donations and continuing that um, NFTs for a cause and inspiring other um, inspiring other organizations to to donate um, to charities consistently. Love it, love it. So. Uh, I know that you've been obviously very focused on working on this project. You've had some updates. Are there more updates as to Mint Date? Uh, any partnerships or anything else that you want to put out there? Um, so I've been working on some partnerships behind the scenes. One of them was the Keep Abreast. And fortunately, um, they have agreed to let us sponsor um, their grants, which is good. Um, that means, you know, we've got a good working relationship. Um, there's another um, organization that I'm trying to work with. Um, it's kind of, um, it's not quite official yet, um, but I'll give you a little teaser. So they're called uh, <laughs> Fuck Cancer Events, and it's a fun organization that throws events um, for those that have, have been affected by cancer and they raise money on these events um so i'm going to be working with them um and a few other organizations that i'm talking to like merchandising companies and things like that so that you know we can have some cool merch um and i'm also um working on uh creating events where there'll be charity auctions so it'll be like a little party um where you get to go to an auction and, you know, have dinner and, and do fun things. So that's kind of what I've got going on right now. Perfect. Well, we appreciate you being up here. And if anyone has not already checked out the She Survives Project run by Ashley D. Can, we recommend you click in there. I am following her on that account. She's been tweeting a bunch from it. And I recommend you do the same. Appreciate you being here, Ashley. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Aaron, coming to you the blonde broker with the unique unicorns what's been going on and what's the latest updates on your project hi guys um yeah i've just been uh pretty busy kind of getting back into the swing of things this week um definitely ready to hit the ground running next week um we're, we're pretty much finished with um the developing side of the project i think where's my developer at he's down here somewhere there's carl um so He's looking good with um, our smart contract and getting everything up and ready for Mint Day, which we will be doing the first week of March. And I think it's going to be super exciting that um, we picked the day that Majors 1 happens for Call of Duty in uh, Arlington. So the boys are all going to come into town and we're going to kind of all launch together and hop on live and kind of really like... Um, get everyone really pumped up and excited. So I think it's going to be really cool to do an in-person launch. I don't know if anyone's done that yet, but I think that's what the Unique Unicorns team is about to do. And yeah, we're super excited. So um, our plan for the next like three weeks is to, uh, we want to do like 20 days of spaces. So the Unique Unicorns um, every day will be hosting a space and um, we're just going to be talking about mental health and also letting other NFT projects um, come up and chill if they want to. We just want to um, really kind of work on interactions and momentum. And then um, all of my lovely ladies up here, I have uh, your one for ones ready. So going to be giving those out to my friends and uh, super excited. So artwork has been uh, something that was taking me a really long time and something that God we've spoken about on other spaces is that, um, you know, really doing the art as a founder for a project, it takes a lot of time and I'm not talking about just like, you know, painting one painting. Um, you're really doing a couple hundred different traits and um, pieces for this 10,000 collection. So, and not only that, you're trying to make your, some unicorns extremely rare. You're trying to make your one of ones look just like your honorary members. And, um, you know, if I would have known from the beginning, like how long the art aspect would have taken, I probably would have drawn the first couple and then hired an artist. But this has been a really, really, really fun, um, project for me and something that I'm very proud of myself for doing and uh, really it makes makes me feel good like the amount of time spent so knowing that if you're wanting to like be part of the unique unicorn project um, 
the founder was there. Like my ass was in my desk chair for the last seven months working on this for everyone and really, you know, trying to make an impact out there on the world and trying to find the best therapists and counselors that we could have come into the discord and finding the right organization to be donating money to the right college to give back to and a lot of stuff with this project. So, um, you know, I had, I did have a fallback this week with my grandpa passing. So we're going to have the first counselor event happen next week instead of this week. Like I wanted, I just wanted to be able to be there and be live with everyone in the discord. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the update. Sweet, sweet. So, you know, it's great to see that Discord continuing to grow, people coming together within there and wanting to have really a safe space so that they can share and engage with other people. You obviously had these great partnerships as well. Uh, you know, a lot of opportunity coming your way, um, which I do like to see. Is there any other overarching trends within the NFT space that have been happening over the last couple of weeks that have maybe been appealing to you, just things you've been seeing happening, maybe anything you want to work into your own project or just ideas that have come up? Um, not so so this week I've kind of been really um, distant and haven't been collecting NFTs as much as I normally do. Um, but I'm still kind of focused on a lot of women led projects. Like that's just where my, my heart is and where I really want to support and I'm still going to buy other projects. But anytime I see like, you know, the, another woman founder working on something, I'm just like immediately drawn to it and I want to see what she did and I want to support um, when possible. So um, nothing new for the week, uh, maybe still kind of dabbling into like play to earn games and seeing where NFTs are going to take on the gaming industry. Um, but yeah, that's it. Perfect. Well, appreciate you being up here. And of course, all my speakers, if at any point another speaker says something that you want to come in on, just throw up that raise hand feature or, you know, feel free to uh, add on to their points. But thank you, everybody, for contributing. What's up, Stacky? Oh, yeah, PB. Uh, so your your NFT project will be huge. Please elaborate on that. <laughs> so, like, but, uh, what's up, Wolf, by the way? What's up, guys? Yo, yo. What's up, what's up? It's so, like, I'm actually, like, for the last couple of weeks, I've been getting a team together and I'm working on a project right now, which we probably should launch and like, like launch on Twitter and stuff in like four to six weeks. But I think for right now, it's all I can to say. I'm just we'll press you more as we get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. You guys will all be involved. All right. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm interested. Let me know. All right. Let's go to Mr. Alpha himself. And that is NFTs Anonymous. Would love to hear from you since last week's space. What have been what's been going on in this wild, wacky area of NFTs? We definitely gotta stop playing it up like that. People are gonna start uh thinking they can like shadow trade me and things like that. Um, probably not a good idea. No, um, I'm actually really excited about just consistent development, communication, and culture from the cool monks community. Uh there was a little bit of a decline with the market as there was pretty much across the board with NFTs. Um, and it was nice to see that the community, you know, really stayed uh, together, you know, it was really positive minded. Wasn't a lot of FUD going on in the discord and the developers just continue to stay bullish, but also cognizant. Like they drew attention here. I'm going to pull this up because I think this is a lesson for, other projects out there, what people's expectations should look like. I love everything about this team and just the way that they communicate. So it says, uh, my beloved Monk family, it's been a rough week here in NFT land with ETH pumping and NFTs dumping across the board. However, Monks are holding up well. Allow me to highlight some stats from our community. Uh, increased our percentage staked day by day. Monks currently staked is over 86%. Yesterday it was a little over 85%. Boost passes staked is over 81%. Day before was a little over 76%. Day before that was a little over 68%. So these are like arbitrary numbers. I know to a lot of people in here it doesn't mean anything, but it's just the amount of detail that they're willing to go into. And they say, these stats show our consistent progress in the midst of a raging bear market storm. However, we are aware that some monks are still left stranded out in the open sea. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then they make it cute. 
go into a bunch of different announcements and reveals as far as things that they always had a roadmap and then they filled in more details with each thing along the roadmap to make it that much better as opposed to putting out something vague and trying to fill in the blanks and just present something they already had the something well figured out before they launched and now it's just really fine-tuning it and refining the experience and really adding sophistication to their ecosystem um and it's really catching a lot of people off guard and like they're realizing just how well developed uh this is and yeah i mean it's a community that i've never wavered on uh even like i said when the market has you know taken its turns um but that's the community i'm most bullish on right now that is you know an, a, a current opportunity um besides that what else is going on in the space um i mean we see that rug radio has basically like tried to mm, i don't want to say monopolize the media market but they definitely are trying to have a more consistent presence very similar to your platform not geared towards the uh -oh. same audiences necessarily um However, I just, I think it's, uh, you know, something of interest that their, their token was released yesterday. Uh, tomorrow, they're going, oh, no, I'm sorry, Saturday, they're going to release even more rewards towards it. And that's when you can start to qualify for the DAO token. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. I think last time I checked, the rug token was around like $2. So that's, that's a pretty quick uh you know jump there and i'm just keeping my eye on it to see if it's sustainable i'm invested in it uh pretty modestly so i don't know ask me questions i'm better when you ask me questions well no I mean, a little bit of direction you're doing good okay so did you see the i mean might as well talk about it did you see the squiggles thing today did you have thoughts on it did you get ruggled no, I stayed away from that because I heard rumors early on. You just you can't put anything out there publicly unless it's confirmed. As soon as someone started to confirm some things this morning, I tried alerting my following about it as you know as best as I could. Um, it's unfortunate. It's uh, definitely an ongoing problem in this space as more people come into it, and I think a lot of people, as I've heard recently from some of these higher profile conversations that I've been privy to are not are, are they're not tolerant of it and they're not going to take that risk they're going to wait until there is some sort of guarantee some sort of layer of security presented uh as far as their investments so i thought that was a really interesting perspective i think that many of us have this uh more so not juvenile but a little bit of a degenerate uh more uh high risk uh, tolerance type of energy. And that's why we may not think twice about it when there's people that are getting scammed and rugged every day. But these institutional investors and other high profile individuals, they don't look at it the same way as us. And so I thought that was really interesting. And um, I can just say that there's it's being addressed or it's in the process of being addressed. <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you the same question I asked Christine. What's the best utility you've seen so far? Maybe like top two or three. Best utility. Just the concept of staking, I think, is so rational that you're rewarding people that are loyal adopters to your project or to your community. So for those that may not be familiar, basically staking is taking your supply out of the market so it can't be bar uh, it can't be traded. And by doing so, you earn a certain number of, you know, tokens, like the in-game currency, the in whatever the community currency is. And then you're able to use those towards whatever the ecosystem's uh, rewards and opportunities are. Um, I think that's a really cool concept that creates more supply and demand. Uh, it shows that there is more of a sustainable community that has developed based off high staking percentage. Um, and I think it leads to some really innovative, uh, responses as far as how people perceive their role within these communities and, you know, the governance and whatever else that comes with that. So I love staking. And then what's one other utility that's really unique? 
Hmm. Uh, whatever uh, Jenkins the Valet has been doing as far as licensing the IP of these NFTs, which, you know, is the primarily the Bored Apes, uh, but licensing them into a book with an author that is like, at least nationally renowned, possibly world renowned. Um, although his name is blanking me right this second, uh, I could look it up. But basically, the fact that they had all of that kind of just—I've met the person that represents Jenkins the valet before he was Jenkins the valet, and he was always a very astute, like just well uh you know kept individual like it's just as far as my interactions with him very professional very forward thinking and so to think that he possibly had all of this just circling in his head before jenkins the valet became a thing and then he was presented with was that i think that was once we already had ape so he was kind of already formulating it but to see what it has blossomed into being represented by uh UTA, I think, or CAA, I can't remember which one, uh, but one of the, you know, uh, obviously large media agencies, um, or talent agencies, sorry, it's just really cool to see that progression and that something that stemmed from Web3 is able to take so many, like, real-life ideas and offer them to their community where they actually are like involved it's they're, they're they get to interact and help build the story of their nfts how do we feel about all the celebrities that are coming into the space how do you feel about that case-by-case case basis can't can't make a blanket statement about all of them i've had mm -hmm. interactions that have been good i've had interactions that have been poor i have had i've seen some that are actually ignorant and they just don't know any better and others that are just exploitative and manipulative and trying to take advantage of the system uh Thanks. there's yeah th th there's all different motivations and incentives and uh interests of these people they're no different than you and i are besides they have larger voices agreed love it i am going to come back to you but i just want to get make sure everyone gets involved so taylor talk to us you've been doing a ton of nft spaces what have like what have you been learning what have you been picking up drop uh drop the insights taylor come back to the phone paging bitcoin baddies <laughs> i know she didn't fall asleep no way probably no way. Uh, in another space right now Got the, got the two phones running? Oh, okay. yeah. All right, all right. We'll come back to uh, Taylor in a second. But PB, let's get you back in here. So what made you want to start your own project? So what made me want to start my own project is, like, I've been – I feel like NFTs are, like, the next big thing. And I feel like, like, my youngness, that if I can get on this now and – have a couple of projects with very like, longevity and with amazing utility and stuff like that, then like it really could be like a spark to like my career and I could help other people to like, do the same thing. And honestly, I just feel like NFTs are the future. Like with everything, like that's my feeling. Do you uh, have plans? I guess, is there any projects that you would say you're modeling yours after or learning from? Yeah, well, I've talked to a few projects, and to be honest, I'm just smiling myself off, like, the big boys, like, the big projects. Um, a couple could be, like, well, like, there's different things. Like, for the community, I really like how, like, Typical Tigers, they have an amazing community, I feel like. Marketing, Bapes is doing a very good job in marketing. And, like, it's different things, like. For every single different aspect, I'm looking at a different project because, like, that's how I view, like, their community and how they are, are advertised and their art. Like, art-wise, I really like CO1. They have really sick art, in my opinion. Like, have you guys ever heard of it? No. CL1? What's the... You said CL1? Yeah, CO1. No? Can you pin it at the top? CL1. Um... Let me see. Yeah, they have a like a hundred K on Twitter, I think. 
Just look up C dash O. Like, actually, I'll tell you. I just pinned it. I think their art is pretty sick, like the realistic. Zone. Oh wow, yeah. So you're into the like the realistic three D. Yeah, like my project's art. gonna be very realistic and like futuristic. Oh yeah, you can't say anymore. I was about to start asking you questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but like, yeah. What do you guys think? I think I think that's good. I think the three D uh things I mean it's certain people that buy those though. Exactly, yeah. You know, those those three D projects. Like some people are interested in two D like art type projects. Yeah. Other than, like three D and then you have you have most a lot of people just like to flip them too if they're popular. Yeah. But yeah. um if you got some kind of game, like, you know, them being able to like, you know, go into the central land or go into yeah, like, yeah, different metaverses awesome. then then that's a pretty dope thing because you know that's another uh point that people like to um talk about too like for example uh what is that what's our project the lemmings one of our first nfts that we bought they're they're now doing 3d in the in the central land so you know we thought they rugged for a second but no they was working on getting into they partnering with the central land to get their nft uh walking around in the central land now so it's pretty cool yeah, so, yeah. something like that I don't want to spoil anything else, so I'm not going to add to your statement or anything. Because who knows? Maybe I've already thought of that, but I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the uh, uh, utility of Hat with 3D, you know, there's a lot you can do there. And the uh, reason I know is because. Um, I have, uh, I'm the co-founder of the Nifty Ape Nation, which uh, is premium 3D photo real NFTs. And um, our NFTs come with this uh, fight game called Fight Club. It's like Mortal Kombat, uh, Street Fighter style, right? And we wanted people to be able to have um, a really premium quality way to make their own 3D content too. So later this year, um, the uh, 3D content tools that we use to make this beautiful stuff um, we want to make it accessible for people. And uh, if you looked in the back of our Fight Club video game, and I invite everybody, please, to uh, take a look up top because I'm just about to pin up um, our Anthem video. It explains the project in about one minute. But in a nutshell, uh, the layers are Fight Club video game, uh, Metaverse, which is built photo real Metaverse called Ape Island where people will have uh, e-commerce and be able to sell your stuff and you'll be able to play. Um, and AI brain capabilities as well. Uh, we've already tested it. I've had conversations with these um, AI apes, 27 different languages they speak. And uh, once again, so we want to give people access to these 3D content tools. And the reason it's so far out and so next level and so beautiful is because uh, the dev team... Um, it's a, a scrappy group of uh, freedom fighters from all over the world, 16 different countries, um, as well as uh, all of us stateside. Um, I have a, I'm a, a creative director and a commercial director, uh, films and Sundance Film Festival on the creative side, stuff like that. So it's a really, really strong team that believes in decentralization. And it's actually, um, you'll be interested in this, Wolf, it actually was born out of... Um, the ape movement for a you know fair and transparent market so that's what these um, apes are fighting for and that's what the whole collection's about and uh, perhaps the last thing i'll say that's um, most exciting and fun for me is the fact that real time they can actually with an app on your phone mirror your facial movements and your body movements and there's examples of it in the video up there you guys can see me doing it but you turn your head, it turns its head. Open your mouth, it opens its mouth. So you can stream with it. You can have AI brain powers. You know, you can make money for yourself. You can create a brand for yourself. These are the ways that NFTs are evolving. And uh, we definitely feel like um, we're in the running, at least right now, for uh, you know one of the best tech and uh, best looking NFT projects out there. So thanks very much. Thank you for coming up and sharing that with us. 
Um, definitely, I think we're going to dig into some more of these projects that are, you know, giving them a little bit more time to highlight. Uh, if our speakers want to come in with questions, that would be good too. I'm DMing with Taylor. I think she's at the grocery store. Um, so, you know, we'll get her back when we get her back. I also have party shirt that's going to be coming on any minute. We'll be talking with them. Um, real quick, I, I'm going to go to, I actually let's go to Ashley real quick. I see your hand up. Oh, I was just going to say, cause, uh, um, I just found out recently, um, actually yesterday from my lawyer that they're going to start doing NFTs for litigation. So like when big cases come out, they're going to have like NFTs for like, like guilty or not guilty or whatever the verdict may be. And you basically in yeah. part of the, uh, the um the lawsuit or whatever it is uh if you get that particular nft and if you get the wrong nft you lose everything so it's like it's really crazy i just heard about it yesterday so so your your crimes can't be erased huh they're just on the blockchain <laughs> yeah and they connect to your wallet that's terrible you can't I even know. sell your crimes can you sell them I guess uh, I was like, dang, like, I, I guess it's for bigger lawsuits. Like, you know, say if, you know, the lady was to sue McDonald's and then she won. If you own the NFT that said that, you know, McDonald's should pay her, then you get a part of that settlement. That's supposedly how it's going to work. Well, with the, with the AI capabilities, you'd actually be able to um, access any precedent in time and uh, be able to litigate that way through like through an avatar. And you just do it digitally. You just do it. Uh, you don't even have to do it in person. That's funny. Ever. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, we got some more guests up here, but real quick, um, I want to throw out there for a moment just a special highlight to our co-hosts that are up here this evening, two incredible women who are, and by the way, shout out to this panel being incredibly diverse, which is amazing. Um, but especially to these, so the She Survives Project, um, we definitely talked about them a good amount and, you know, run by Ashley, can't say enough, saving lives, literally, you know, going to get a lot of money to cancer and then the unique unicorns, you know, on an equal mission and unique unicorns, we're going to get them. They're almost at 4k. Uh, if everybody could take a look real quick, just click in there, throw them a follow. Uh, my good friend, Aaron running that a lot of our friends, she's done a lot for the community and that's a, that's a really unique project and you know, not just unique unicorns where they're building up a whole discord with the idea that this is a place where people can come and get free therapy, talk to each other, get their thoughts out. Um, I think it's going to save people a ton, a ton, honestly, because like a lot of people can't afford a therapist. They can't afford, uh, they don't have like friends to talk to. They're stuck in their rooms because of a freaking pandemic. And I think the unique unicorns are doing a huge thing. So I'm following that page and I recommend that you do as well. Um, so shout out Erin and everything she's doing. Erin, you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's extremely exciting seeing this account grow. And um, I love that people are here to support, like, the goal and the mission. Um, you know, Unique Unicorns are here to fight the mental health stigma that we live with every day. We want to provide support educate the public while we're doing so and advocate for policies that support others with mental illnesses and their families. And um, a lot of our team has struggled with adversity and uh, we have simpler, similar mental illnesses and it's really been amazing to come together online and um, some of us actually in real life. But the, the thing here is that, you know, we all have you know, nine to fives or um, some of us trade in the market and like market volatility has been known to trigger a lot of mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. And I know that comes from the workplace as well, but um, this community and this discord is somewhere to go afterwards to get free help. Like once a, once a week, we're going to have a night session where the counselor is going to come on and kind of do like a just debrief and de-stress and talk about how we can get through this together. And I'm super excited to start that next week. Um, but we, we really just want to be a safe space where you can come find solace in the community and find friends along the way and just really relate to one another. And, you know, you know, if you're struggling, just know there are others struggling as well, but, um, we really grow when we learn to love and accept our dangerous gifts that we have and that 
we face every single day. And I think doing that together as a community is what really makes this project unique and special. And um, we're just very excited to help and give back. Congratulations on this project. Um, my daughters are going to freak out about this. I can't wait to show them. They're probably going to want me just to sweep everything on here. I'm just letting you know it's uh, it's going to happen. So thank you. This is so Aww. cool. Let me know. I'm making some, um, you were finishing the artwork rec artwork right now but we're making really cool rainbow and cute ones and if the girls want anything in particular like let me know because unicorns okay. uh i've had some people send me a ton of pictures they're like hey my my kids have like 20 stuffed animal unicorns and I, I, you know i forgot about it for a time being that this is like a mythical creature that really embodies what we all stand for and how unique we are and uh, people love them so I'm, I'm very excited and i i definitely appreciate the support turbo or yep. I'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. Wow. Everybody better be sweeping those floors of the unique unicorns. Um, okay. Pretty excited to introduce our next guest that we have on here. Was able to do a space with them earlier this week and we got them back. Just for some backstory, I think you all know how many hours of spaces I do a day on here. I do like 10-ish hours a day, maybe sometimes. I don't know. Today we're only at like eight. So we'll see You know how long this one runs. But in the time when I'm not doing spaces and people are like, how do you relax? I relax by going on TikTok because I'm an addict. And my favorite account on TikTok is Party Shirt. And they've got 21 million followers on TikTok and they do a whole different bunch of segments. And now they're working in the NFT space and we're able to get them on this space. So you can see them up here. They're verified. If you haven't already followed them, you should check them out both on here and on TikTok. So welcome, Party Shirt. Excited to hear from you if you want to share about your project. And you Thanks yourself. for having us. Yo, what's up, y'all? What's going on, guys? So, yeah, so, you know, we actually just got back from a crazy stunt for our project. We can't say too much, but yeah. we're going to be releasing it Monday. But it's going to get some national news. It's, <laughs> I'm, like, shaky still. I'm, it's I a world, so much adrenaline. It's a world first in the NFT space. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're going to be releasing that Monday. But pretty much our project, Superstars, is we're really, like, there's not a ton of good creator NFTs out there. And the ones that actually have, you know, influencers or celebrities or whatever attached, normally, you know, shill it, it mints, and you never hear from them again. And that's what we wanted to completely stay away from. And that's honestly why we, you know, haven't done a project until now. We had been in the space since early last year. We are sort of day trading and investing long term in some other projects. Uh, and, you know, we finally landed on a great team, a great idea and a great roadmap to really create that. So, you know, we're building a community for creators, whether you're an artist or a musician or a TikTok or an Instagram or YouTube, whatever. You know, it's a community for everyone to help support each other. We can share some of the lessons we've learned that got us to 20 million followers because before that it was really five years oh, of yeah. nothing. Um, and so, we so understand. yeah, we understand the struggle. <laughs> and then also we wanted to create media properties attached to it that gives back. So there's actually assets beyond, you know, we didn't want to make this another meet and greet bullshit NFT. We wanted to make this an NFT that actually has assets that are growing, that are building. So, you know, we're going to be launching a podcast and we're going to actually let holders participate in the decision making of the podcast, whether that's what guests we have on, what topics we discuss, you know, how, the length of it. We really want the holders to influence the decisions of the media property. So, you know, that's really our biggest focus right now. We've, well, you know, obviously we've, we're ticking the other boxes like the meet and greets, like the merch, but yeah. we wanted to do something unique, something that hasn't been done before. And along the way, build a really strong community of sort of like-minded individuals, you know, people that like the same shit we do, have the same goals and, and just sort of want to accomplish those. So that's what we're really doing with Superstars. Do you guys know when awesome. you're going to be? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, Turbo, did you have a comment there? No, I was just going to say that sounds really awesome. And, thank uh, you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, congratulations. And you guys are funny as hell. And oh, sure. If, <laughs> if you guys want to do your show ever through uh, a 3D Photo Reel 8, let me know. Hit me oh, up. Oh, 100%. Oh, we'll hit awesome. you with a yeah. You can do it to actually like live stream. It'll like mirror your movements because we have you in the studio and show you. Oh, I love awesome. it. Are you based in LA or whereabouts are you based? Yeah, we're here in LA. I just saw you guys are, so we should Oh, awesome. And I can I'm going to send you the follow right now. Let's have a chat sometime. Perfect. That's my favorite possible thing that happens on Spaces. And it feels like it happens every week now. Is like two of the speakers realize like, oh, we should collab. Yeah. And then that happens. It happens like every week. It's amazing. That is what it's all about.
Yeah, we're actually, uh, I don't know if you guys know who Stevie Williams is. He's the pro skater, but he, uh, but he just jumped on board and he wants to do all kinds of no stuff. No way, uh, dude. I love Stevie Williams back in like the ice cream days, all that stuff. He's yeah, like yeah, one of my yeah. favorite skaters back then. Yeah, we're going to do a uh, space tomorrow. tomorrow night. Oh, we're that's so weekly. cool. We do weeklies, but uh, you that's should do super that. Dope. check it out too. But uh, we're going to put him in a mocap suit and like we could do, we can do up all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> it's hell funny, yeah. Man. That's so sick. Congrats on that. That's huge. But anyway, um, yeah, you guys are great. Big fan. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. I, nice I gotta to meet get out you. To nice to meet that. you. Likewise. Yeah, Stacky's the G. She's a uh, OG. You she say I'm a G. <laughs> the wrong with Stacky in your life. Yeah. So, so, so I have stuff? a question for Taylor. <laughs> I don't know if she's Taylor, on. Taylor, are you back, Taylor? Huh? What are are you back, Are you on the- I'm in the car. But what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Wolf, Wolf, you gonna ask her the question you was gonna ask her before? Oh well, I was. I I actually just told her whenever she wants to talk to DM me. So I don't know if Taylor, do you want to talk now while you're in the car? Or do you want to DM me when you're back? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, you must not be. You hear us? I can hear you guys, yeah, but I was making sure you could hear me clear. Yeah, yeah, well, okay, so we'll go to you and then I have a couple more questions okay, for well, party shows. Okay. So what's up? What's so, the question? So you've been doing all these spaces over the past couple of weeks. What have you been learning? Like, what's new to you in the NFT space? <laughs> Not to FOMO into just any project. Because it's a bunch of freaking rugs. Literally. Rug after rug. Cash grab after cash grab. Hyped up. Too hyped up. Um, I've noticed the most hyped up projects. They end up sometimes having a high floor. And then... Goes down in the dirt. Hype Bears reveal was terrible. They look like some fufu. Yo. Whoever got Hype Bears, I feel bad for y'all, yo. Squiggles oh, are squiggling their way out the community right now. <laughs> there's, I've learned that projects, there's, what happened to 0.08 mints? One ETH y'all starting at now? What's going on? One ETH? Yeah, Is it cracky smoke? Yeah, um, there was one project that started at three ETH, Pixelmons, three ETH, their floor is not even an ETH, what is, what, oh, and people bought it, because it's so hyped up, people, people are, are like, they're FOMOing into the hype, they think that they're gonna, they think that this is the next blue chip, because everybody says it damn near, every day, and it's, Community, this next blue chip, blue chip, blue, blue, blue. These are not the board apes, bro. Work harder. I just think, I think if you're gonna call yourself blue chip, you gotta, you gotta have something to back it up. You gotta. No, you better be above board apes at that point. Well, I mean, I don't know about that, but like, I just think I see things shifting, and it's like, uh, people are kind of asking the question, like you say, like you know, what can I do with this thing? You know, what, how does this benefit me? How does it empower me? How does it help me in my life? That's also, yeah. whitelist has gotten out of control. You got to literally slave in Discord um, and work a nine yeah. to five in there in order to get whitelist. Did, did you um, see you can, you can pay people on Fiverr now to grind Discords for you and get whitelist? Send me the link. <laughs> no way. <laughs> send me the link. It's literally, they're listed on Fiverr. Listen, you giving too much. You giving too much alpha on here, Wolf. This is DM talk right now. I, I mean, that's what I, that's what I give out. That's all you. Hold on, I have to hire for. somebody. Wait, why, well, Megan? That is awesome, Alpha. I love that. Megan came up here. What's up? You got, you got some alpha. Hey, um, just to piggyback off what Taylor was saying, like the cash grabs are getting extra crazy this month. Like it's getting 
scarier than it was before. Like, everyone needs to be really careful. But, yeah, it was it was a bunch of them, like, the so, last couple of weeks. So how, how do you make the determination, right? It's pretty hard, to be honest. I have had projects that look so legit, right? I'll get on a call with the founders, and they'll be like, oh, yes, you know, I'm running this project. This is my team. Here's my background. I've been a successful person working in tech. Here's my, you know, photos of me online, like all that. Um, here's the artwork. I am the artist, you know, and everything. And then I'm like, okay, like, let me see, you know, what's in your wallet. And they're like, I've been holding, you know, other NFTs and stuff. And then they go to the mint. And I'm like, cool, you know, I've vetted them for a couple of weeks and feel good. And a day later, it's like rug pull. Oh, our founders are nowhere to be found kind of thing. So I'm like, how how can you, where is the the line as to like doing due diligence? Because with stocks, I feel like at a certain point, like you can just, it, is it like you just can't buy anything that's cheap? Because it feels like even the rugs are coming in at high prices. So it's like, Did where they just, is it? Dis, dis, they gotta disappear completely? To be honest, they're more likely rugs the higher the prices, which is crazy, but it's so true. I think the same thing. The higher the price is, the more likely it is a rug because they're trying to uh, capitalize off rip for, um, instead of gain over time. They just want everybody to just pour all their money and sell out and then rug. Um, me and Taylor were actually talking to somebody in the spaces earlier that owns an NFT project. And he was like trying to promote it through payments and stuff. And he actually hit up the founder of squiggles and was able to pay him to get people to like retweet his stuff so like that's the kind of thing that's going on behind the background where you think that it's like real hype but in reality it's paid hype like people are getting paid to retweet this and then it makes other people retweet they also have bots that are liking and retweeting stuff and like making things look hyped when they're actually not and it's crazy gotta start checking the followers at this point and the likes it's definitely find some addresses it's definitely true all right i want to circle back to this in a second also talk to a couple more people i brought up but i have another question for party shirt um so i'm curious like you guys obviously have created a lot of connections um within you know the creator space and other areas how do you plan on using those to, you know, supplement your project and perhaps even create access to the creator economy for people that are holders within your project, if that's something that you've thought about? Definitely. I mean, the amount of meetings that we've been taking the past couple of weeks yeah. with creators, with executives, with, you know, agents and managers around this project has just been immense. And there's just so much excitement around the space right now for real projects and I think one of the biggest things, and again, we keep hammering it down, but I today would not put any more money in a project without Doc's founders. You know, can you imagine, you know, an S1 coming out, an IPO happening, and you don't know who the people behind it are? It just, like, you couldn't even begin to imagine that. You know, so I don't know why it's acceptable for, you know, people to be anonymous in the space. Like, let's, let's be real, you know, they're going to come under some thin veil of security, this and that. You know, Vitlac, the founder of ethereum i'm probably pronouncing his name wrong he doesn't have any security you know so if he doesn't need security why does someone of an nft project does so i think you know more and more we're going to see docs founders coming out putting their name behind the project because if you if you're not willing to put your name next to a project how much faith in it do you have you know and what are the consequences if you abandon it when things don't go 100 percent right you know so i think more and more we're going to see that, you know, the space is obviously changing, right? Before, I think projects almost have to mint immediately now. Like we're seeing projects when if they don't mint, you know, within the first five minutes, they're not going to mint out and they're going to have to keep slashing supply and it's just a nightmare. So whole different things. That's why, you know, we don't want to launch too early. We want to make sure we have a strong community that we can execute on everything on our roadmap that we promise. And that's why we're not, we're not quick just to put out promises just to hype up the project. Everything we say we want to deliver on and we want to be completely transparent because that's how a project's going to survive for the long term is yeah. that, you know, you don't have to promise the world and deliver nothing. We'd rather promise something a lot smaller and over deliver because that's what's going to get the community excited. Right. That's going to get more eyeballs and more trust in the project. Yeah, we just honestly want to build it out and have those 
utilities that we're talking about really set in stone so we can just come out and deliver right off the bat so the people aren't wondering and then really shows you know that what we're doing is actually legit and also buys time for the larger scale utility that we want to have attached to yeah because we could go out tomorrow and get 10 of our influencer friends with 10 million followers each to show the project but how can we incorporate them in a way long term right how can they actually benefit the community long term and until we have a concrete plan of that and work that out with them where we trust that they will come through on that because it's our name attached to the project we're not going to just sign people up willy-nilly just to shill it because that's the easy part the hard part's building a long-term project that's going to continue to grow with time and add value to the community